Now, so far, we have discussed situations where we have a point on the curve, where we're efficiently using all our resources. But what about cases where we're not on the curve? Here are two points, U and N, and I want you to quickly pause the video and try to guess which point represents the scenario where we aren't using all our resources, where we have unemployed resources, or we're using resources inefficiently. And that would be point U. Remember that the name of the curve is production possibilities curve. So the curve shows potential output, how much we could possibly produce at max if we were efficient with all the resources we have. So it is possible to be inside the curve producing less than what is technically possible with unemployment of resources or inefficiencies. So what about point N? outside the curve. Well, since it's placed beyond what is possible shown by the curve, point N is unattainable with our fixed amount of resources and at our current level of technology. We cannot possibly produce quantities of both goods at the level of point N. So let's discuss examples of being at both point U and N and any changes we may be able to experience. So starting at point U, we are experiencing unemployment of resources or inefficiency. Let's say that there are people who could work but are unemployed, or there's a supply of steel that we have but just aren't using. Now in this case, if we are able to make the people who are unemployed working to make phones and computers, and we start to use the steel that was previously unused, we could move up to a point on the curve and produce more. Where we used to produce less at Q1 and Q3, and now produce more on the curve at Q2 and Q4, where Q just stands for quantity. And this increase in output from, from Q1 to Q2 for computers and Q3 to Q4 for phones is called actual growth. And I like to think of it as that we could have produced more and now we're actually producing more, so actual growth. Now, let's look at point N, a level of output that we cannot attain at the current state. In order to get there, we need a change in the PPC itself. And this is achieved through the changes in the fixed conditions of a single PPC. One way the PPC could change is if we experience an increase in the quantity of factors of production. Let's say we found a new mine with a whole bunch of steel, or we had high birth rates and now had more workers. This would allow us to produce more since we have more resources. Another improvement is improvement in the quality of factors of production. Let's say that we have better education and worker training this means that workers, which is a factor of production labor, can now work more efficiently and will be more skilled at making phones and computers, thus increasing the amount that can be produced. So that's an example of an increase in quality of the factors of production. And lastly is improvement in technology. As technology improves, we may be able to produce more. For example, with the factor of production, let's say capital, we may have a machine used to make screens for both devices. As technology improves, the machine can produce screens with fewer workers operating it and using less electricity. That will allow us to produce more phones and computers. So any of these three changes can increase the amount we can possibly produce in this economy and the PPC itself shifts outwards making the quantity and outputs at point N now attainable. And we call this increase in output potential growth, which we can think of as an increase in our potential to produce itself. 